Okay, okay, ladies and gentlemen, good day. Let's start the year with a phenomenal way. Well, I do have some challenges starting the year. Uh, I got to say this really quickly. I started uh, yesterday. We had a windstorm in, uh, where I live. And then so tons of trees fell. I don't have power in my house, no electricity. Uh, I was depending on my cell phone. It was kind of choppy. So now I am next to T-Mobile Techwater in, inside my car doing this live stream because it had to happen. Um, Margaret gave me like an ultimatum and I'm like, no, no, there's no way. I don't know. This has to be, this has, this has to run smooth. Even if I have to do it in my car. <laughs> so, um, really quickly, first of all, I want to say uh, hello to all, everybody who signed up. Uh, Meredith, uh, Dave, Christina, Chris, um, Dave Marsland, John, uh, everybody. Uh, I see John Atkins, uh, Ivar. Ivar, I was thinking actually doing the live from outside the car. I know you live in Canada. It's really cold, but here I'm not I'm from the Caribbean. I'm not, I don't. I don't want to be outside and freeze my little Puerto Rican skin. Or I was going to say something else, but I should. <laughs> um, but the really quickly um, today's presentation. Um, Everybody who's here for the first time to your right, you have the chat box. I see everybody participating and, uh, and it's very active, which is phenomenal. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure to put it in the every bottom of the area where it says ask questions. If you have some time, share the event. Let's bring in the people here. Uh, today's agenda is going to be 30, 40 minutes talking about the main presentation, one or two minutes sharing some contact information, uh, and uh, 15, 20 minutes going through our, our QA. Uh, we have uh, today's topic is San Lucia Distillery, the art of blending distillery tour. We have our two guests, which is phenomenal. I'm so jealous they're in the Caribbean, and here I am in uh, cold, cold America. Uh, but Margaret, Ian, how are you guys? Oh, we're doing good. We're in air conditioning, actually. Um, it's quite warm and hot outside, but it's a pleasure to be here. We're really excited. And we were looking forward to this session. Um, so yeah, me too. I'm very excited. Um, it's my first time doing this, I guess, my second time. But um, I'm looking forward to sharing all our knowledge with everyone out there. Excellent. I think that the only difference is that you are in air conditioning, and I am in a car with a heater. Uh, <laughs> you're sitting down nice and comfortable, not chairs, and I am in the back seat of my car. Okay. <laughs> Next time, it, we'll have it on the beach. How about that? So we can have the yeah. sea in the background, you know? Perfect. <laughs> but I'm joining you both. I'm there. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> um, before we start, uh, Margaret and Ian, and we can start with Margaret first. Um, if you can tell us a little bit on a high level about your life, uh, who you are, and uh, how do you end up working at such a great facility? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I would have to say maybe the great one had a plan for me. Um, <laughs> as a youngster, I knew the Barnard family um, because I came from very humble beginnings and always had to have a job during the summer and um, so I could get all my school supplies and so. And it so happened I worked with the Barnards um, as a youngster. And once I started working with them, I think they had the expectation that as soon as I left school, I had to come back and work with them. So even though I had started another job, uh, one, one of Craig Barnard, Laurie's brother, came in and said, oh, no, what are you doing working there? No, 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 you've got to come across. So within a week, I moved across, and that's how I started with the Barnards. Actually started in the distribution side of the business, and... Uh, I worked mainly with Craig, with Craig, who was Laurie's brother, running, he ran the hotel side of the business, but I did distribution, which was the hotel supplies, as well as some of the products produced by St. Lucia Distillers at the time. Um, ten, 10 years later, Laurie Barnard goes, oh no, we need this distribution arm to be located in St. Lucia Distillers. I will take over mentoring Margaret. She's going to become part of our organization. And then I started working with Laurie Barnard in 1994 directly. Before that, it was only, you know, once a week or so. And then I became, uh, I would say, I have to say, I became his right hand 
And he taught me quite a bit about the distillery. I was, I was at most meetings. I would be present in everything that was happening, making things happen. I always handled the operation side of the business while he loved the production side. So anything with production, he would do that. So this is how I ended up here. And I'm still here today. When he passed in 2012, um, I had been holding on as managing director while he was ill, uh, held on further, and then later was appointed in 2013. Um, now I'm the CEO of the organization. So yes, I've been around for many years. <laughs> Let's not count, okay? We'll keep that part a secret. It's been a few years. <laughs> and um, I, I I've was, certainly seen a lot. I didn't hear that part. You you broke up there. I was I was counting on with my calculator, but then I'm like, oh, man, let me stop here one second. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> we'll leave it there. <laughs> So here I am today, and I mean, I, I really do wish Laurie Barnard were here to see, you know, what has been happening with our rums, um, where we've gone uh, with, you know, we're not owned by GBH, um, and I think that they're a phenomenal group, and I'm, you know, really pleased to be part of them and seeing what they have done. So, yes, that, that's my story in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you. And what about you? Yes. Well, I joined the company in 1999, and I first joined in the blending department as a production assistant on the, the stewardship of the then master blender, Mr. Harris. And actually, Mr. Harris, our time was quite short-lived during that time, and he left about a year after I joined, and I had to do all the blends myself. With the little bit limited knowledge, imagine I did my first blend and presented it to the tasting panel, and they said it was a real fantastic rum. I should continue. That's the that's the, the career for me. I said, you know, let me try this thing out. And from then on, I made stri strides from there, learning about the production department, learning about blending, distillation, fermentation. I even actually left in, um, I think it's 2003, who I went to study brewing and distilling at Harriet Watt University in Scotland, and then returned later, uh, about a few years later, to St. Lucia Distillers, where I use that knowledge to now manage the fermentation and distillation processes. And as time went by, I had people like Margaret, Laurie Barnard, and a few other people who actually mentored me and they, to help me improve in my managerial skills and to you know, give a young man some guidance. And I'm thankful for that. And today I've taken many roles from managing the food safety aspect of the St. Lucia, of St. Lucia distillers, HACCP and ISO, to quality control, to fermentation and distillation, and even some of us working in the sugarcane mm -hmm. fields, um, which is quite um, a, a unique experience to have, working in all these different aspects of the, the plant. And it gave me a broader and, uh, understanding of rum and a greater appreciation for what I do. I love what I do, so it's a great place to work. And I could tell you that for the 20 years I've been here, uh, we have St. Lucia Distillers actually just uh, started sprouting and became it became much more exciting place to, to be at uh, and work. And we had a great team here making great rums. Does the does St. Lucia Distillers has a uh, distribution business of uh, providing the hotel industry? different things or a separate business um well it's located right here in the compound we have the distribution arm of the company is called barbe limited but we specialize in um in alcohol so we do we the larger supply of wines on the island so yes we supply both the local market as well as the hotels and so so yes we do have a distribution company that's how we get our product to market it makes sense good commercial sense to have a complete portfolio absolutely absolutely um so let's start let's start with i'm going to bring this next slide up uh and it's about the history of san lucia uh and well san lucia distillery and margaret if you can uh, talk to us about it please um and please go now you go know now you know i could stay here whole day the whole day speaking about the history of st lucia distillers right so just stop me when i when i go overboard please um if i take too long um okay so 
we start with while St. Lucia Distillers was formed in 1972, it was a merger between two distilleries on the island. What happened was that by 1972, St. Lucia had moved from producing sugarcane into bananas. And this meant that um, distilleries were closing throughout the island with the two remaining ones. We had some very smart guys who said, wait a minute, uh, our raw material will no longer be available in abundance. We will have to import. Why are we competing with each other? Let us merge our operations and form one distillery and that way we'll be much more efficient and we can continue our operation. So this is what they did in 1972 and became St. Lucia Distillers. Now we are able to obviously track the Barnard side of the business. Um, the, the other side, which was the geese industries, where we don't have the historical information, but we do know that they were around even longer than the Barnards. So I can start with young Dennis Barnard because you, some of you may be familiar with our Chairman's Reserve 1931, which is which honors Dennis Barnard and our heritage. Dennis Barnard, as a youngster, his parents had died young. He had been raised in the UK. When he came back to St. Lucia as a young man, um, made the decision to take over his father's estates, which had been neglected. And on one of these estates was a distillery because obviously once you were growing sugarcane, it made sense to have a distillery. And there started young Dennis Barnard on the path of the rum and sugarcane. And of course, he later went into bananas. His son, Laurie, who we consider to be the true patriarch of St. Lucia Distillers and the original chairman of St. Lucia Distillers, joined his dad at the age of 18 um, working on the estate and his dad put him in charge of initially bananas and the sugarcane estates. Uh, I have to admit Laurie wanted to be a pilot um, but his father said no way you will not earn a living like that so he had no choice but to come back and work on his father's estate. Laurie therefore was the one who really focused on the distillery. By 19, I think it was by 1969, he had actually taken over as the general manager with specific responsibilities for the distillery. And there started his love of rum, um, producing rum. They weren't doing much blending, but they were producing rum. He became fascinated with it. And he was very much involved in the whole negotiation that went on and the merger and becoming part of St. Lucia Distillers. So he was part of St. Lucia Distillers. Dennis had ex was not involved. And Laurie Barnard became chairman of St. Lucia Distillers. Um, and he sat on the board from 1972 when the company started. At that point, St. Lucia, we were only really producing bulk rum. They decided, come on, let's start. Um, we need to grow this business, we need to do more. So they decided to launch a product in 1973, they launched Denros Bounty Rum. And they started our, you know, our whole process of producing um, bottled rums in addition to, of course, the bulk rum um, straight from the still that we sell currently. <clears throat> so we started with our Denros Bounty. I have to say it wasn't terribly successful um, so Laurie went on to realize, well, he needed to do more. He needed to invest more. He needed to learn more about rums. So he really focused um, and invested. In fact, we bought a new still. We did a lot of, um, we, we bought a new column still in nine, and commissioned that, I think, in 1985. Um, and there was a lot he did. So, and then we separated the Denros brand. He just separated the Denros brand from the, Bounty brand. So Denros now in St. Lucia is a strong rum brand. It is straight off the still as a, a, a distillate and we sell it at 80%. And then they moved into the Bounty rum, which is was the first rum that St. Lucia brand, well branded rum that St. Lucia produced. And to this day, it is a very popular rum. We now have it in gold, white, dark, spiced, um, and we have flavors. So St. Lucians will, if you come to St. Lucia, that is the rum that you will hear and um, you will taste and St. Lucians will talk very proudly about because it's been around since 
the 1970s. Later on, uh, you know, we figured we had enough aged rum. And so Laurie then decided he's going to produce an aged rum. So he went on to produce Admiral Rodney, his first attempt at Admiral Rodney. And he launched in 1981, Admiral Rodney. Well, of course, again, it didn't do very well. So he quickly took that off the market. But in the meantime, he went on to purchase some pot stills because he felt there was more we could do, so much more we could do with our rum. So he went on to produce, um, to purchase some pot stills. He bought a, a, a John Doe in 1998. Um, then they bought a, a, a Vendome pot still in 2003, each one producing a different type of rum. We started then to uh, age in different barrels and do different things with the rums. And so in 2001, in 2000 really, we launched the Chairman's Reserve. We started off with um, Chairman's Reserve. And this now was a blend of our column still, as well as some pot still rum in it. You know, we started then to, to experiment. Meantime, Bounty was still doing well. Chairman's Reserve now came on board and St. Lucian's really loved the Chairman's Reserve. And we produced um, Chairman's Reserve, now we call the, which we call the original. Um, now that range, of course, includes the white, the spiced, and like uh, 1931. And very recently, since Laurie's passing um, this year, we've produced the legacy in the Chairman's Reserve brand. Uh, Laurie, before he passed, um, had made the decision that we needed, in addition to making rum from molasses, that we needed to go to making rum from sugarcane juice, um, something that had been stopped for a number of years. I mean, Ian Ian looks after that, that part of the project now. And um, while we had started making the rum before Laurie passed, we had not actually, um, we, had not we have actually had no bottle, yes. Um, from that, that um, rum which, which we produced. It was quite many years afterwards that we first started using those, those um, rums which we age in sugarcane in our blends. I think the first was in our Chairman's 1931 and, and now in the Chairman's Legacy. So we have it Which there. we have it in. So we, we tried to put a large amount in the Legacy to represent Laurie and um, in memory of what he did. Um, I would say though that we came back to Admiral Rodney later. Um, I do remember that it was in the 2000s that we decided we need, we had enough aged rum. Uh, we had all these barrels sitting around of, with rum. And so we didn't think we had the expertise in, in house. So he, we, he went off and he got somebody who'd retired and had that guy come in, a guy named Sonny Rodriguez. And he came in and he blended our first batch of Admiral Rodney for us the second time around. And the gentleman was so complimentary about the rooms that um, we had at St. Lucia Distillers. I have to admit, it boosted Laurie's confidence. And from then on, there was no looking back because suddenly he realized that Lucia was producing great rum. Um, we can compare with everybody else. And he decided, that's it. We're, we're, we're doing new things each time. It was always some other something else. So we're now into... Uh, what year do you have there? 2016. I can't quite see the big um, <laughs> the the big screen. There we go. Thank you. Uh, when Spiribam, well, should be GBH. Sorry, uh, purchases St. Lucia Distillers. Um, by that time, Laurie had passed on. We'd been sold to Clico. Clico got into trouble, so the company was up for sale and. Uh, GBH purchased us, and now we have the relationship with Spiribam. With Spiribam, we are moving places because um, I have to admit, when they first came on board, one of the comments that was made was that, um, oh, you, your rums at San Lucia Distillers are so complex. But um, what we realize now is that while, it, while our rums are very complex because we have all these stills, we have barrel, all different barrels, we make rum from molasses as well as sugarcane. Um, it is what differentiates us and makes us unique. Um, the fact that we our, our blenders go crazy here, they have such variety available to them that uh, Spiribam has continued to um, push us in that direction. 
and encourage us now to move into all different, um, you know, new products. So now the Admiral Rodney, you have different, um, you have three levels of Admiral Rodney. We've introduced things like, um, even in the, well, the Chairman's Reserve, we recently launched the Legacy, where we have the officers' releases. We have so many new and exciting things happening. Um, so Spirit Bam has taken us around the world and um, is taking us to new heights in terms of our products and projects. Excellent. Uh, um, let's, let's start with the uh, new tour. Um, but that, that explanation was was phenomenal and as uh thank you for saying such in depth in such a per short period of time you um uh, it, it's a great story it's a great success story too um especially with bounty hours. Rum. you were mentioning that bounty rum at the beginning was not successful mm. uh, <laughs> and then the pencil was sh sharpened and then boom, today is the proud and glory, like uh, the pride and glory of uh, the locals, right? Uh, yep. It's the most, <laughs> which is phenomenal. All right, let's start with the videos. Uh, the videos don't have uh, audio. So anybody, uh, Ian or Margaret, feel free to uh, talk during the conversation uh, as we're going through the videos. Okay, we'll start with the first one. Okay. Oh. All right, here we are. You can see the distillery. This is a bird's eye view of the distillery. You could actually see the aging bonds back here, the molasses tanks and the administration building. Uh, you could actually see the 15 acre, acres of sugar cane, which we grow two varieties of cane. And 